The US military aircraft fleet is unquestionably the best in the world. The sheer number of aircraft and the technology of those aircraft is unmatched, especially in the fighter jets. Not only are these US fighter jets like gorgeous supercars in the skies, but they are of unparalleled ability. But how did these US fighter jets stack up against each other? In this episode of Aerospace Engineer Explains, I'm gonna pit all the US fighter jets currently in service against each other to see which one really is the Top Gun. So this was an incredibly difficult task for me to perform, not only because all of these US fighter jets are incredibly beloved by everyone involved with the military, but they're also very comparable capabilities. So I have no doubt that this is gonna stir an incredible amount of controversy up in the comment section below. So feel free to let me know how wrong I am down in the comment section. The way that I rank these fighter jets is by four major categories. The first is maneuverability, second, lethality, third, advanced technologies, and fourth, versatility. A few of the things I looked at when considering maneuverability are the aspect ratio of the aircraft, the speed, the thrust to weight ratio, the overall thrust, and the climb rate. The aspect ratio is a ratio of the wingspan over the wing area that basically dictates how maneuverable an aircraft is in one easy number. The lower the aspect ratio, the more maneuverable the aircraft. Some of the things I considered when looking at lethality were the number of hard points, the payload capacity, and the weapons on board. A hard point is a point on the aircraft that you're able to connect weapons to, such as bombs or missiles. And for the advanced technology section, I included things such as thrust vectoring, stealth technology, and other avionics. And when I considered the overall versatility of the aircraft, I considered things such as whether or not it can do a short takeoff or a vertical landing, its multi-role capabilities, and its range. So without further ado, let's get started. Coming up first at number 12 is the AV-8B Harrier. And although this is a historic aircraft, as the Harrier was the first aircraft to be a jet and take off vertically and land vertically, but it has very limited capabilities. For instance, this is only one of the two fighter jets on this list that cannot reach supersonic speeds, coming in at the second slowest of any aircraft on this list, with a top speed of only 673 miles an hour. The Harrier also sports a pretty limited combat range at about 350 miles. And although it has an average payload capacity of about 9,200 pounds, it only has six hard points. So for me, this was an easy last place. And next on our list coming in at number 11 is the F-5 Tiger II. The F-5 has decidedly the least amount of thrust of any aircraft on this list, coming in at a total thrust of only about 7,000 pound force. And it also has the unfortunate title of being the slowest supersonic aircraft on this list. It also has the worst range of any of these aircraft with a combat range of about 140 miles. But on the plus side, it does have a price tag of only a cool $2.1 million. The next aircraft coming up, I'm sure is gonna make a lot of people upset with me, but coming in at number 10 is the A-10 Thunderbolt. The Warthog has been an absolute workhorse for the military. It has been one of the best ground support aircraft in history which is why it might surprise a lot of people that it's this low in this list. However, the A-10 is not meant to be an advanced fighter. Although it is an incredible piece of engineering, built with incredible multiple redundancies, a titanium cockpit, all these features are made to make it one of the best ground support aircrafts out there. But the A-10 has the unfortunate dishonor of being the slowest aircraft at this list, clocking in a max speed of only about 439 miles an hour and an abysmal climb rate of only 6,000 feet per minute. The A-10 does have a pretty good payload capacity at about 16,000 pounds, and it's tied for first for number of hard points with 11 hard points, again, lending itself to the incredible ground support aircraft that it is. But with a combat range like 290 miles an hour and a thrust to weight ratio of 0.36 and a top speed that's the lowest on this list, I'm sorry, I had to give it 10th place. Don't hate me. Now deciding between the next two aircraft on this list was probably the most difficult decision that I had in the whole ranking process. If anything, some lists would probably just put these as a tie, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna be a sellout. 
Coming in at number nine is the F-18 Hornets. So I am putting four different variants of the F-18 Hornet in this section at slot number nine. However, I am not including the Super Hornet. That's entirely another beast. So it was actually easy for me to put the F-18 above the previous aircraft because the F-18 really is a step up. It's the next caliber of fighter jet. The F-18 Hornet has a decent climb rate of about 50,000 feet per minute and has a max speed of Mach 1.8. And if you don't know what a Mach number is, make sure you check out my prior video where I explained what supersonic flight is and what a Mach number is. The F-18 is also an incredibly versatile aircraft being that it was designed to be a carrier borne aircraft and carry out an attack role as well for ground support. And like I alluded to earlier, number eight is where it really starts to get tricky for me. Coming in at number eight, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Now before I recorded this video, I had actually asked my Instagram followers which aircraft they thought was better and I got a pretty decent debate between the F-18 and the F-16. But ultimately, looking at the numbers, I had to go with the F-16. There are a few reasons why. The first being, the F-16 has an incredible climb rate. The climb rate of the F-16 is 72,000 feet per minute, squarely placing it in first place. The F-16 also has a slightly faster top speed at Mach 2.05 compared to the F-18's 1.8. The thrust to weight ratio of the F-16 also edges out the F-18, coming in at 1.095. And it has a larger payload capacity coming in at 17,000 pounds compared to the F-18's 13,700 pounds. Overall, looking at the numbers, I just felt the F-16 was slightly more maneuverable, more agile, and a better nimble fighter than the F-18, which slightly edged it out for me. So I did get some feedback on my Instagram after I posed the question there that the F-18 is one of the best adversaries within visual range. However, I had to go with the F-16. It really was revolutionary. It was the very first aircraft. It was actually designed to be dynamically unstable, making it incredibly maneuverable. But like I said, feel free to disagree with me down in the comments below. I'm an aerospace engineer. Like I said, I'm not a pilot, so I've never flown either of these aircraft. I don't have firsthand experience with them. I'm just going by the numbers here. As a Navy brat, I grew up adoring naval aviation. I still do. But while researching this video, I gained a renewed appreciation for how incredible the Air Force aircraft really are. Coming in at number seven is the F-15 Eagle. The F-15 is tied for the fastest aircraft on this list, coming in at a top speed of Mach 2.5. It's a twin engine aircraft with each of those engines putting out 14,590 pounds of thrust and a respectable thrust to weight ratio of 1.07. It is the single greatest combat range of any of the aircraft on this list, coming at over 1,200 miles. Coming in at number six should be no surprise to anyone, but it's younger brother, the F-15E Strike Eagle. This re-engined F-15 has the same top speed of about Mach 2.5, but gives out a thrust of over 17,800 pounds. It does take a small hit on its combat range, coming in at 791 miles, as opposed to the 1200 of the previous variants. However, it still comes in at second best on the entire list. Couple that with the fact that it gives the second best total thrust of any of these aircraft, coming in at 35,000 pounds. Coming in at number five is the aircraft I had dreamed ever since I was a little kid that I would be able to fly in, but my hopes are dashed when I realized that I did not have 20-20 vision in both eyes. The F-18 Super Hornet. The F-18 sports brand new engines increasing its thrust and allowing it to have even more hard points, clocking in at 11 hard points. It puts up respectable numbers for top speed, maneuverability, and all those other metrics. However, what really sets it apart is its newly reduced radar cross-section, its avionics, and its versatility. In fact, the reason that I put the F-18 above the F-15 exclusively is because the F-15 was only designed to be an air superiority fighter, while the F-18 was designed with a variety of missions in mind. At its core, the F-18 Super Hornet is a carrier-borne aircraft, and as such, it has to perform a variety of tasks, such as attack missions, fighter missions, air-to-air -air combat roles. It really has to be a jack-of-all-trades. 
For me, that's what really put it above the F-15 in my mind. And if you're very familiar with military fighter jets, you may be asking yourself, are there still even four more fighter jets out there? And to answer that question, coming in at number four, three, and two, are the F-35 Lightning. The reason that the F-35 comes in three different places is because it comes in the A, B, and C variant, which all have very different capabilities. Coming in at number four is the F-35B, the Marine variant. Although the Marine variant is the only one that has stovel capability or short takeoff vertical landing capability, it takes a huge hit on range because of it. The F-35B has the shortest ferry range of any of the aircraft on this list coming on at only 900 miles. Meanwhile, the combat range is not much better coming in at only 550 miles. And that's the reason that I put it below the other variants of the F-35. However, the F-35 as a whole is still clearly a top tier aircraft. All of the F-35 variants feature thrust vectoring, all aspects stealth, advanced avionics, and a payload capacity that allows this aircraft to stand out above the crowd. The F-35B, however, has the lowest payload capacity coming in at only 15,000 pounds, while the other F-35 variants come in at 18,000 pounds of payload capacity. Coming in at number three is the F-35A, the Air Force variant of the F-35. The reason that I put the F-35A here is because although it does have almost the same exact combat range as the F-35C, the Navy variant, it severely lacks in its versatility. Coming in at number two, the F-35C, the Navy variant, is able to be a carrier-borne aircraft. In other words, it can fold its wings and it can deploy and land from an aircraft carrier. This greatly enhances the F-35's ability to perform a variety of combat roles, such as attack missions and air-to-air -air combat. And finally, without any further ado, we have the single greatest aircraft in the single greatest air force in the entire world, the F-22 Raptor. Should be no surprise here for anyone who's familiar with aviation because the F-22 is unparalleled. It has by far the best maneuverability, thrust vectoring, all aspects, stealth. It was the first fifth generation fighter ever. It has an incredible climb rate of 69,000 feet per minute. It has a max speed of about 2.25. The F-22 has the lowest aspect ratio on this list, making it one of the most maneuverable aircraft ever conceived. But its total thrust is what really sets the F-22 apart. It has the greatest thrust of any fighter jet ever, coming in at over 52,000 pounds of thrust. So if you found this video informative, make sure you hit the like button. If you wanna learn more about aerospace engineering from an aerospace engineer that anyone can understand, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.